The objectives of this module are to introduce students to the world of information security, to address the major issues that security specialists will encounter in the real world. This means we need to provide knowledge to allow students to develop the skills necessary to become IT professionals so they can take up either a managerial or a technical career in cybersecurity. Students need to understand the role of cryptography and security protocols, privilege management and access control, common software and network vulnerabilities, usable security and human factors, and undertake real-world case studies in information security. The module is designed to facilitate part-time learners. This means that we're using online pre-recorded lectures, and in addition with occasional face-to-face -face workshops. The assessment for this module is 100% continuous assessment. This comprises of a weekly learning journal, which is worth 65% of the marks for the module. This journal includes a book review of Ross Anderson's famous textbook, Security Engineering. Two case studies constitute another 30% of the module, and these are real-world case studies. And finally, students have to present to boards of directors and to management teams, so there's a presentation requirement, and that's 5% of the module. As an example of a case study we used this year, you're the Chief Information Security Officer for a company with more than 500 employees. The company has a customer database with critical sales and accounting information for thousands of customers globally. The company IT system is operational 24-7. Any downtime causes significant revenue loss for the company. On a Sunday afternoon, you get a call from a duty manager who has detected a data breach in progress and there's evidence of ransomware being deployed. Your task is to prepare a 2,500 word response plan that you would employ to deal with this scenario. This plan should be written in such a way that it could be presented to a board of directors. Incident management, who, when and how to report. How to manage and respond to incidents. This includes communicating with stakeholders, colleagues, management, the board, shareholders, customers and the public. You should assume that news of any incident will spread very quickly, sometimes within minutes, certainly within hours and days of the incident. Another topic is surveillance and privacy. Take this scenario. You're the Chief Information Security Officer in a 500 person company. Your CEO wishes to deploy CCTV cameras very extensively across your organization in meeting rooms, in offices, the server room, public spaces, the car park, corridors, etc. They've also suggested random drone surveillance of the streets around your building to detect would-be intruders who are spying on your premises. CEOs vary from the sensible conservative type to risk takers to autocrats and sometimes incompetent. Some think that they know it all. They're probably the most difficult to deal with. Others are prey to the influence of their peers. In the above scenario, our CEO may have had dinner with somebody extolling how CCTV footage saved Company X from disaster. Another topic we'll be looking at is social media. In this case, your CEO approaches you. He's become aware of information relating to the company appearing on various social media platforms. Some of the information is true, but it's embarrassing to the company, and some of it's false. The CEO wants you to do something about it ASAP. Find the leaker, that's the number one priority. And secondly, get as much information taken down as possible. How do you go about tackling that problem? Another topic we'll look at are ethical dilemmas because cyber ethics are becoming very important in cybersecurity. In this scenario, you're aware that in the coming days, the CEO is going to sign a major contract to ensure the long-time viability of the company. You become aware of a significant data breach where customer data has been accessed and may have been stolen. You contact the CEO's PA, explaining that you urgently need to talk to the CEO. The PA reveals, however, that this information would likely prevent a new contract from being signed. The PA asks if you can manage the situation until the contract is signed and then inform the CEO. Thus, the CEO will be able to sign the contract as they didn't know about the problem. What do you do? What is the right thing to do? So, as you can see, this is a practical, orientated module aimed at preparing professionals to work in the real world of cybersecurity.